What Juicy say? He be like. to that Arturo Smoke Sessions Volume 2, Nothing Change with Dr. Junt. Thank you so much to number one of the chat, Lenny, of course, our number one financial contributor and a damn good streamer in his own right, so make sure you're liking and subscribing, folks. Uh, I have a very limited amount of time, so I'm just going to get right into it, and I won't even bother with an intro. It's in the title. If you want, a, if you want an update, just check the title. We're blasting through it. We got a lot of stuff to go through. A lot of current news. It's all happening right goddamn now. Uh, might as well just start with the Trump crap right off the bat. Uh, hope you're doing well, Lenny. Um, one of these days, I'm going to find time to actually plug into that stream. I do try to pop in and give you the view, but man, I tell you, I don't even have time to respond to my text half the time. But anyway, okay, let's get into it. I don't have time to waste. Uh, once again, though, thank you, Lenny. Up, up, up. There we go. Living the dream. Oh, let me tell you. I'm putting diapers on my dog. I'm putting diapers on my kid. Start put, putting diapers on my head and screaming into them. All right, no. So let's get to the Trump shit right off the bat. We got a couple things here. And big props to your boy, Davey, who has provided uh, a few of these links. Also, Woke Patriot has been providing some links. Tisriel. Uh, strategy member and of course um, uh, Leon as well <coughs> if I missed you please let me know um, of course people might be trickling in actually I didn't tell the discord so let me actually I think I forgot to tell the discord here uh, yes I did indeed forget to tell the discord it's game time there we go we'll get more people trickling in all right, but let's get let's get rid of this Trump shit right off the bat. Let's fucking you know what I'm talking about. Let's get these assholes right out of the way. Trump supporters are leaving in the middle of his speech. Uh, read the craziest thread on Twitter about what's going on in Russia. Uh, Davin, what are you talking about specifically? We will be getting to Ukraine at the end here. Uh, Trump supporters are leaving in the middle of his speech. This event has quickly become a total failure for Trump. A huge miscalculation. I don't know. You know that's Midas touch saying that. I mean, come on with Midas touch over here. These uh pro there's basically pro bush you know we 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 didn't mind the republican party until trump came along and we pine for the day that the republican party will return to some you know state of what they considered honorable when in fact it was this th the very thing that the people that are at midas touch supported 10 years ago that helped create the framework that we now see with trump russia defense ministry and soygu 
Um, I heard some. I heard. I heard some. You know, news analysts say that uh, it wasn't that big a deal. It's just kind of routine kind of shit. What's uh, What's so crazy about it? Shoigu's still in power. He's just in less power, and they just got a different guy in there. But anyway, back to this clip here. So we see, so we, you know, this big, this big thing, I think in what, New Jersey, right? Something like that. Um, you know, uh, they're, you know, Trump, Trump and his, his cronies talking about how this is a massive success. Uh, and we see here people like literally leaving, half frozen snake, you know, mid speech, like, uh, I'd rather beat the traffic. I don't know. We've heard it before, you know, like. The novelty, okay, you know, the novelty's over. Okay, we saw him. We can just tell our friends, yeah, we saw Trump. Like, we're going to vote for him. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, he, you know, he's, I don't know about huge miscalculation or anything, but it does, it does show that, you know, you don't, he doesn't have this, um, you know, totally cult-like. It's a, he's a novelty. He's a novelty. He's like a freak show. You know, you show up, you say, oh, yeah, I saw the bearded lady. <laughs> You know, I saw the diapered man. <laughs> okay, then we we wanted to beat the traffic though, so we we you know we left a little early. We you know we we could hear the rest of it on YouTube. With the dew. Poor thing, she said. Oh my God, who knows what the hell he's talking about? Fucking psychopath. So, uh, thank you again, Davy, for these uh, clips here, because uh, you know some, when I see this shit, half the time I don't even have the energy to put it in the Discord because it's just like this man is. And do we need any more reason to hate this man to do everything in our power to destroy you know what i mean like um but no it does need to be documented of course but it's just i'm so it's he's he's beaten me down i'm so fatigued he's reading them a god bless america bible oh hopefully he signs it with his name right next to jesus there uh, Trump, Silence of the Lamb, the late great Hannibal Lecter. It, it's a wonder, I, you know. So this has been going around, and I don't, I don't even know what to say. So apparently he brings this up quite a bit. It's some kind of rhetorical gotcha. He's, I, I think he's trying to com some kind of loose comparison to like his enemies are like Hannibal Lecter. I'm not even sure because it really does sound like he's talking about Hannibal Lecter. One, like, like he's a real guy. And two, like he thinks he's pretty cool, and you know that he's a night. I like. I don't even know what he's what point he's trying to make here. So, uh, if if people in the chat could maybe help me after listening, that would be great. Let's have a listen. Silence of the Lamb. Has anyone ever seen the Silence of the Lamb? Yeah. The late great Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. He's a wonderful man. He oftentimes would have a friend for dinner. Remember the last scene? Excuse me, I'm about to have a friend for dinner. Is this poor doctor walk by? Yeah. I'm about yeah. to have a friend for dinner. Yeah, remember when he when he fed that kid a little piece of human brain on the on the plane? Yeah. Cool guy. But Hannibal Lecter. Uh-huh. Congratulations. The late great Hannibal Lecter. We have people that are being released into our country though. that we don't want in our country. And what? No, there's got to be a point. One more silence time. There's got to the be a Has fucking point. Has anyone ever seen the silence of the lips? The late great Hannibal Lecter. Gavin. He's a wonderful man. He oftentimes would have a friend for dinner. Remember the last scene? Excuse me, I'm about to have a friend for dinner. Is this poor doctor walk by? I'm about to have a friend for dinner. But Hannibal Lecter, congratulations, the late great Hannibal Lecter. We have people that are being released into our country that. Just literally, just yo, yo, Hannibal Lecter, my boy. Yo, you ever heard of this guy? Silence of the Lambs. He was so funny when he said that thing. Anyway, back to hating immigrants. That was that was the non sequitur of non sequiturs, dude. That's the non sequitur. Like it literally, it's like, okay, do Hitler next. <laughs> hey, you ever heard of this Hitler guy? Guy, you know, he used to run Germany, you know. Really, uh, you know, brought the country together for his people. You know, like you, like you think, like you think he's like, okay, he's doing a bit. It's sarcastic, and then there's no punchline, and it's totally not sarcastic, and he's segueing into something else. It's like, whoa, dude, you forgot the part to be sarcastic about this. You literally just praised Hannibal Lecter. I'm not playing, by the way. Watch the movie Hannibal. That's how it ends. It's the last scene of the movie. He takes a takes a little piece of Ray Liotta's brain and he gives it to a curious kid. 
What you eating, mister? He's got it. He's got it. He's got it in like a in like a Ziploc container. He's little little doggy bag, little to go bag. Yeah, it was a great scene. I mean, I you know, hard to watch. Where he feeds he feeds Ray Liotta his own brain. Oh my god. It's it's basically just fat, so it probably tastes really bad and like flavorless. Probably have to flavor it up. All right, we got to keep moving. So. I don't know, man. That's, you know, people are saying like he's mentally declining and all that stuff. But I mean, he's, you know, the, the part of his brain that knows how to lie and gaslight seems to be good. But apparently he's slurring more. Um, and dude, this is just a straight up praise uh, appraisal, you know, of Hannibal Lecter. I don't even know what to fucking say, man. <laughs> he should just kill somebody uh, you know, in, in the middle of Times Square. He should just do it. There's going to be at least one loyal Trump fan that'll be like, look, I'll sign whatever I need to sign. But if Trump, if Trump wants to put a gun to my head and right, oh, I'll, I'll sign whatever I'll give it, you know, there's gotta be at least one loyal MAGA fan willing to do it, but just go ahead. You know, did anyone in the crowd go, Hey, did he just praise Hannibal Lecter unironically? Did he just anyway? Okay. Uh, anyway, the, the whales, the killer whales kind of know what the fuck's going on because for the second time now, this is the second time I've reported on this, uh, yacht sinks after latest incident involving orcas in the Strait of Gibraltar. Um, hold on, let me switch this up here. Hugs and kisses. Whales, Okay. We can't, we, you know, we can't call them what, you know, Twitch, Twitch won't let us call it what, what, we, what they're actually called, guys. They're called hugs and kisses whales, okay? Because we can't say the other word because it makes Jeff Bezos nervous. Because how the hell are you going to sell bleach talking about hugs and kisses whales? You know what I'm talking about? Vessel measuring 15 meters in length sank after encountering, uh, after encounter with the animals, Spain's Maritime Rescue Service report. No, no number of orcas have sunk a yacht. Oh, it's orcas. It's not even killer whales. Okay, goddammit. it. Doesn't even make sense. Okay, joke sucks. Fucking you suck. Fucking suck. No one thinks you're funny. What the fuck are you doing? It's a complete waste of time. What the fuck are you doing? Uh, anyway, back to the article here. An, un an unknown number of orcas have sunk a yacht after ramming it into the Moroccan waters in the Strait of Gibraltar. Spain's Maritime Rescue Service have said in the latest of a series of similar incidents involving the animal. But like I said, this is not the first time I've reported on this. Orcas are fucking up yachts. And it's interesting, you know, they're, they're, the scientists have a theory. Uh, you know, they think it's, you know, has something to do with their engines or something, I think. The vessel, a boring cognac, oh my God, which measured 15 meters, 49 feet in length and carried two people, because that's the world we live in now. Encounter the highly social apex predators, also known as killer whales. God damn it, I'm wrong twice. Ah, they are killer whales. Orcas, a.k.a. killer whales. See, I don't know anything, okay? Look. High school, you know what You know what I was doing in high school? I wasn't reading my books, I can tell you that. So I blame this on my teacher, so good job, Mrs. Robinson. No, you were incredibly sweet. I'm trying to be funny. I don't have time to read everything in the chat. I'm sorry. I only typed it five times. They're the same thing. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. At 9 a.m. local time on Sunday, the passenger reported feeling sudden blows to the hull. Wow, so they're literally ramming it hole and rudder before the boat started taking on water. That's literally like a horror movie. You know, that's that's totally how they do it in the horror movies. They just slam into the to the side of it and crack it open. But usually it's unrealistic because the animal's like, oh, that's, that's ridiculous. How would an animal know that? Oh, that's ridiculous. That's Hollywood. So no, they figured it out, dude. We're gonna have to armor up our boats. Because um, uh, Mother Nature's had enough of our shit. See, that's what the aliens are doing. Those UAPs are coming down, fucking with the Navy. They're talking to the animals, okay? They're giving the message, hey, you gotta do something. They're doing the Aquaman thing. This is legitimate, okay? 
New World Order. Okay, welcome to the goddamn uh, InfoWars uh, break-off fan, fan stream. <laughs> Passengers reported feeling sudden blows of the hull and, uh, and rudder before the boat started taking on water. After alerting their rescue services, a nearby oil tanker took them aboard and transported them to Gibraltar. The yacht was left adrift and eventually sank. Um, I don't know. Uh, awesome. Awesome. That's super awesome. Go Mother Nature. I feel like, look, even if it, even if it is like there's a scientific explanation and yada yada, I feel like we should still take it as a sign. You know what I mean? Like that's a sign. That's a clear sign that we're fucking up. Is that just me? I get it, right? There's probably some real scientific explanation. Whatever, I don't care. Let's let's just intentionally let's do let's do what they what the what the right conservatives always do, and lie to ourselves, delude ourselves, for the benefit for for the better for the betterment. Let's just lie to ourselves that yeah, this is Mother Nature, whatever Gaia telling us to not do this. Okay, come on, it's fun. Come on, guys. It's fun. Just, uh, you know, delude yourself a little bit. Come on. Lie to yourself a little bit. It's fun. Feels good. Feels naughty. Out around 49 or orcas living in the Strait of Gibraltar, GTOA researchers found a total of 15 whales from at least three different communities. Excellent. Maybe make the engines more silent. Maybe, maybe, you know, fuck yachts. Huh? That's, yeah. Hot take. <laughs> I don't know. I just let's just fuck the Strait of Gibraltar. <laughs> now we got beef on the Strait of Gibraltar. I love saying Gibraltar. Why we got beef? But the orcas are just playing on humans trying to look. Let's just misinterpret this, okay, for the benefit of mankind, and take this as a sign that we need to be doing better. Um, the incident is the latest example of reoccurring orca rammings around the Gibraltar Strait that separates Europe from Africa and off the Atlantic coast of Portugal and northwestern Spain. Experts believe them to involve a subpopulation of about 15 individuals given the designation Gladius. Yes! Yes! Bunch of gl Gladius badasses that are like, I've had enough of this stupid crap. You know what? We can't stand up to Jeff. But the fucking killer whales can stand up to Jeff. They they don't work through the laws of man. Let it's we need to learn the lessons from the killer whales. Okay, that's the that's the thing that that's the lesson needs to be learned here. Moving on. No, we need okay. The lesson here is that the killer whales are talking to us. Okay, that the UAP aliens spoke to them. Okay. And they're, the killer whales are telling us very directly, quit fucking up and be cool, be better, be cooler to the environment. Be cool about fire, you're safe there, be cool. <laughs> uh, bridge news, bridge update. Um, they're blowing the bitch. Tonight we are a major step forward. They're blowing the, the bitch. Normal, getting it back to normal in the Patapsco. Yeah, they had controlled explosives blasting parts of the key bridge off the dollar. They throw the ship. fish. It clears debris and clears the path to take the ship to port. My WMR2 favorite News, book series. Jack Watson was there. You saw it happen. We watched we it in go. the studio, but it had to be amazing to be Woo! there, Jack. There it goes, sure there was, goes. What a remarkable thing to see Blowing in that person. Bitch. It happened just after five this afternoon and it lasted just a few seconds. And leaders tell us it was the best and yeah. safest way. You know way. what? You know what? They're saying this is a controlled demolition. <laughs> you know? Those fucking guys will say anything's a controlled demolition nowadays. Hey, to get all that debris off. Here we Today go. was an important part of the operation, oh, yeah. an important milestone. It went off yeah, with a cloud of black smoke. Oh, no! And before you can exhale, you could hear it from miles sure, away. Like, that's just a coincidence. As the Army Corps of Engineers commanding general nice. tells us, it nice. was all on purpose. It's, it's nice. hard to, for everyone to get an appreciation of oh, all yeah. the math. Yeah, right, that's on purpose. Yeah, right. Okay, who's the conspiracy theorist now, right? Oh, what they do? Rig this up with, with what? explosives and then ignited them <laughs> okay it went off right. with a cloud of black smoke Ooh. and before you can exhale you could hear it from miles away 
go. That's fucking awesome. So there you go. Bridge update. We don't need to watch the whole video. We saw the cool part. You get the point. They're working on it. They're hoping to have the whole thing cleared by the end. The big, the, the other piece of actual relevant news is that they're happen, have an, hoping to have the whole thing cleared uh, by the end of this month. So good luck to them and, uh, you know, it's hard working. And also RIP once again to those um, hardworking construction workers. They did find the final body a couple, I think, last week. Um, I mean, just literally, you know, get up at 3 a.m. 3 a. kind of hardworking dudes doing road work on the bridge. Um, we heard over the radio, we, we did, we did, you know, we, I, I played the broadcast there of the, of the radio, the cops talking to each other and they're like, yep, as soon as we, as soon as another cop shows up, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, drive over and tell those guys to get the hell off the bridge. And about two seconds later, after saying that the bridge was literally gone and he was like, uh, there's literally not a bridge to, to drive across anymore, guys. It's fucking gone, deleted. Really, uh, really terrible stuff. So RIP to those to those guys once again. Hardworking construction workers. Um, terrible stuff, man. Just literally, literally the worst. One of the worst ways to go. And hopefully it was quick. Um, people have been criticizing me on Discord. If you if you want to go to the Discord, you know, uh, you know, exclamation point Discord there in the chat. Um, you'll see uh, hundreds and hundreds of mentions of this. Um, what is this? Met Gala, the Met Gala, uh, uh, people, uh, you know, the thousands of people that are in the Discord have been shouting at me for, for coverage on this. So uh, I, I heard this and I, I was like, finally, uh, I can silence, you know, these these chattering fools who are who are constantly telling me to report on this. Um, and uh, it has to do with a blockout. I, you know, if you're on social media, maybe check this out. But this is really great. And, you know, this it, it, this is one of the few times where I'm like, no, the social media stuff, these vapid idiots actually care. And this this could, you know, absolutely get them to stand up on the right side of history. Uh, because the whole point of this black blockout movement is to find these celebrities that are, you know, for their own career, uh, for their own embetterment, um, you know, for money reasons uh they are not standing up for palestine they're not you know they're just you know uh we're i'm not i don't do politics i don't talk about it we just keep everything safe and just it's all about vibes and it's like no motherfuckers are dying and people are listening to you uh by the droves you have responsibility um to this elvis had the balls to do it um so should you um and it goes back to my my criticisms for the twitch celebrities as well the political twitch celebrities where it's like if you have power if you have a voice, if you have a microphone, you should use it and stop being a coward, okay? Because uh, it, it's this cowardly behavior that is allowing the uh, the oligarchy, the empire, the, you know, the government, the man, whatever the fuck you want to call it, you know, the new world order, motherfucker, buy my shirts, buy my supplements. I'm so broke, my fucking wife divorced me. I'm now married to a human frog. He's gay, okay? I love him, but I don't know what to tell my friends. Anyway, newworldorder.com, thank you so much, new world order. <clears throat> You get what I'm saying? All right, let's watch this clip. I encourage this. This is great. Block these celebrities. Oh, they're so pretty. Oh, they're so rich. Oh, they're so cool. Whatever. I made a Google Doc of every celebrity that attended the Met Gala, and now I'm going through and writing if they've been silent or if they've been using their platform to speak up about the genocide in Gaza. Yeah, I love it. Uh, that voice is uh, funky as hell. I don't know what's going on there, but I love this idea. It's time for the people to conduct what I want to call a digital guillotine. Whoa. A digitine, if you will. Whoa. We gave them their platform. Get canceled. It's time to take it back. No, I agree with that, though. You know, they're, they're vapid fame uh, monsters. And uh, um, at the very least, you should be standing up for human rights, okay? Your incredibly lavish lifestyle provided, you know, you know, the people that follow you, look, it's hard work, whatever the fuck, I don't care, right? At the very least, sitting at the top, on the on, on the very top of, of the lap of luxury, at the very least, you should stand up uh, for some goddamn basic human rights positions. Oh, my career, my career, my career, fuck you. Once Fuck we start you. blocking, not just on followers, stand up for human rights. Even muting their names on social media, 
another continent will come up on us and marketers and ad agencies or whoever brand deals they're gonna be like um you're not catering to our audience or the right. people we're looking to target yeah. and you're not gonna make us money yeah exactly that's why it's important and we all no, know that like celebrities it. want their money that's all they get about that's right so let's take that away from them by muting them blocking them and reporting them because hey. who are they if they don't have a platform do we really care oh get it get it and it is from al jazeera who knows you've probably never heard of this it's probably going nowhere but i love the sentiment i love the sentiment and this is one of the few times where you know what i'll give it to the kids i'll give it to the zoomers go have fun social media activist away because honestly the celebrities are vapid and they actually care about this and look you like it or not i don't like it but this is the reality celebrities have a lot of power uh they they, they can affect the zeitgeist etc etc um so good on you zoomers uh tiktokers who are doing that stuff so davin I, I actually forgot your first link here i'm trying to blast through mine uh, but we'll just take a quick peek at what you're talking about. Uh, rebellion and demise. Uh, Shoigu's fall is likely coming. Oh, interesting. Um, why are they? You know, what's this? What? What? Davin, why do you think they're? What? Are, what are they? What's the purpose of throwing these people under the bus? What? What are they trying to do? Um, yeah, totally. Good luck to them. I thought your gay frog husband left you already. Look, I don't want to talk about it, okay? Look, we don't want to, we, we got back together. Look, I don't want to talk about it, okay? Look, he's, he, you know, I, it's not fair. It's not fair, okay? Um, the, the new world order is trying to take over my life, okay? And that includes my love life. I just don't want to talk about it anymore, okay? It makes me cry. Union news. Um, cicadas emerging. <laughs> into salt shakers yeah so i did hear about that i don't think i have time to report on that today i will put that in the discord because i did not um um ba 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 woke patriot over here getting on my dick about the uh about the evidence that hamas is a piece of shit but you know i'll wait for him to get into the chat and then i'll, I'll explain to him um all right uh this is really shocking footage i've not shown this strategy member is convinced that i've shown this i have not uh, but this is absolutely uh, shocking. <laughs> We're taking on. But this this tells you everything, okay? Uh, the the oligarchy, the 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 million trillion dollar companies that want to run our lives, and they absolutely do. And 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 I have proof uh, that they want to run our lives because uh, they uh, actively spend millions and millions of dollars to lobby and change our government <laughs> for their own for their own embitterment, and not just financially, but also. Uh, in terms of the uh, power hierarchy, you know, if it were if it were up to them, if it were up to them, there were there there would be only certain kinds of news that would be we would be allowed to watch, certain kinds of opinions and views that we would only be allowed to express online, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, a corporate-run world is truly a fascist-run world. In fact, some have said a a government run by corporations is fascism, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but this just gives you an idea of just what they think about us. So these people are uh, used to be they used to be employees for YouTube Music. Uh, I've used it briefly. I'm not really that big of a fan. I actually get most of my music from YouTube, ironically, uh, but I just use regular YouTube um, and uh, the YouTube Music thing. Because it, you know, my problem was is that it kept trying to you know push me towards the generic stuff, the the top twenty radio stuff. It's like you know, I was just listening to DJ Screw. Why the fuck do you think I want to listen to Shakira? You know what I mean, are you insane? Uh, and and really, the recommendations are, of course, the artists and uh, music that makes them money. That you know, that, would you like to buy their albums? That kind of shit. That's what they're trying to encourage. And it doesn't make any sense with my taste of music because I'm like, I want I want to listen to the Chrono Trigger soundtrack and then i want to listen to you know some deep bass underground you know like i said dj screw kind of stuff and uh and youtube music was like uh would you like eminem like uh you know eminem's okay but no i'm good would you like machine gun kelly uh no i think i'm good thank you youtube music we're just gonna go ahead and shut you off i, I literally uninstalled it like it's this whole separate app i didn't want it but anyway 50 of these people who were working there were literally literally in the middle of uh i think uh you know doing some kind of uh you know there was some kind of 
government council meeting or something like that. And they were reporting on how, you know, they were being threatened that they weren't able to unionize. Um, and then this happened. There are less than 50 of us at YouTube Music, and we're taking on two of the largest corporations in the world. So to be supported by the city of Austin and also our allies in the labor community, give us the motivation to keep this fight Not going. Not to interrupt, but they just laid us all off. Oh. Yeah, they, they just laid us all off. We just all, I our, guess we just all Our got jobs are ended today, effective immediately. Wow. Um, I'm sorry your time's expired, but we'll... We'll follow up on this. Thank no, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So that's really sad. Oh, we're gonna follow up on that after we cash these checks from Google. We're, uh, we're, we were looking through our uh, massive checks from Google here, and uh, yeah, we're gonna add this to the uh, to the old list. We care about workers' rights. Oh, that's a blatant example. Wait, that it should be. You know, the reason why they get away with this because they don't. You know, the, technically it's illegal to do this kind of stuff, in most states at least. Technically it's illegal, you know, that if uh, a group, you know, that you're not allowed to do this kind of stuff. But I guess I guess you're allowed to do it if you literally just kill the entire division, which is probably what they did. Where they, they just, you know, instead of, you know, killing little bits and pieces of it selectively, they just literally cut the whole thing off. Which is, you know, you can't, if, if a business is not making money and that business decides to fold up and those people that were working there lose their jobs, that's not illegal. That's just business. That's unfortunate. That's just how it is. Um, at the same time, we're not talking about your average business. You know, we're talking about one of the most successful and profitable uh, businesses on planet Earth, right? And, and here they have the ability to just, uh, oh, this is inconvenient, <clears throat> chop. These guys are making too much noise. Chop that tendril off. Um, and it just gives you, a, it's a blatant example of, of what they think about you, uh, what the oligarchy thinks about you. And, and let's not get it twisted. These people have captured government, not completely, uh, but almost completely. And uh, characters like Donald Trump would enable them to have so much control over our government, you know, uh, in only a few years, you would. Uh, fail to recognize uh, what your government has turned into. It would be a nanny state like you wouldn't believe, turning the whole country into uh, one of those minor towns, you know, those company towns, turning the whole fucking country into a fucking company town, okay? Uh, nightmare shit, Orwell shit. And you fucking bet you Jeff Bezos wants to see that as a reality. So it's just, you know, I just thought I'd show that to you. Nice little picture of, of what they think about us. So this is actually pretty big news. Um, did I have a video lined up for it? I probably should. I, I might have a video lined up about this on Saturday when I have more time. But uh, Chinese tariffs, absolutely banana shit here. Um, that's the technical term. Washington, May 14th. U.S. President Joe Biden on Tuesday unveiled, unveiled a bundle of steep tariff increases on an array of Chinese imports, including electric vehicles, computer chips, and medical products, risking an election year standoff with Beijing in a bid to woo voters who give his economic policies low marks. Now, you know what's ironic to me? This is literally when Donald Trump was running for office. This was like literally the one I was like giving him the broken clock credit. I was like, yeah, no, we do need to talk about China and its currency manipulation and what it's trying to do to the economy and how unfair it is and yada, 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 right? There was actually, because he was talking about it. It's like, oh, the currency manipulation, oh, China's up to something. And then he gets he gets into office, dude, and he's all just like, oh, Xi Jinping, so brilliant. Oh, my God. Don't you know he runs his country? When he when he says jump, they say how high. I just wish I could live, run the country like Xi Jinping does. He's so great. He didn't do jack shit. I mean, he did. He actually, uh, apparently he did pass tariffs. But uh, Joe Biden is doubling, quadrupling some of these tariffs, including the biggest uh, increase, 100 percent tariff on electric vehicles. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Because uh, China is, of course, hoping to 
you know, copy Tesla and, you know, copy all these other companies and sell their, uh, quite frankly, and I'm not trying to be racist here, uh, but try to sell their um, poorly made, because they are, um, uh, cheap knockoffs in the United States and other markets while protecting their own market. That's that's what's shocking is that they have they have all these these protections against other countries participating in their market in their country. But they're like, oh, we're, we're happy to exploit other countries. It's very unfair, and it's been getting worse and worse and worse. Biden will keep tariffs put in place by his Republican predecessor, Donald Trump, while ratcheting up others. Uh, the White House said in a statement citing unacceptable risk to U.S. economic security poised, posed by what is, it considers unfair Chinese practices that are flooding global markets with cheap goods. So, yeah, like I said... One of the few things where it's like, yeah, Trump was right on that one. And he did, I guess he did follow through. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. All right. Fine. You get, you get a one millisecond plus uh, a flush, but it's more of a flush like married with children where like the Fox news crowd oops and hollers because you, you took a poopy. Congratulations, Donald Trump. The new measures impact 18 billion in Chinese imported goods, including steel and aluminum semiconductors, batteries, critical minerals, solar cells, and cranes, the White House said. The announcement confirmed earlier Reuters reporting. What's, the, the direct impact to their economy is great, but really what's most important is that suppliers outside of China are now going to see uh, a big increase in orders. They're going to, you know, could, because the, these companies need to continue to make their products. They need the chips. They need the steel. They need blah, 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 the batteries. But they're going to go other places. So we're probably going to see, you know, much more than $18 billion of economic generation, you know, of, you know, these different, these, you know, these businesses looking for different sources now, now that it's like, oh my God, I'm not going to import a car when there's like a hundred percent tariff. Are you insane? You know, especially for like, you know, what should be like a $40,000 car. Now I got to sell it at 90,000 just to make any money. And it's supposed to be, you know, and it's clearly a $40,000 you know, a Japanese knockoff, or, or I'm sorry, Chinese knockoff. Um, anyway, the United States imported 427 billion goods from China in 2023 and exported 148 billion in the world's uh, to the world's number two economy, according to the U.S. Census, Census Bureau. A trade gap that has persisted for decades and become an ever more sensitive subject in Washington. One thing I would like to know more about, get an update on, is the the unbelievable debt that China owns. You know, uh, of Chinese currency and and uh, American debt. Well, China, China is using the same playbook it has before to power its own growth at the expense of others by continuing to invest despite uh, excess Chinese capacity and flooding global markets with exports uh, that are underpriced due to unfair practices. White House National a Economic Advisor Lael Brennard told reporters on a conference call. So, yeah, it's all true. And, you know, it's hey, you know, Joe Biden uh, has no problem, uh, you know, keeping uh, a bunch of Donald Trump policies in place as we've seen with the border wall the ridiculous border wall that he he makes fun of but then he funds then he you know approves funds to continue building um it doesn't work by the way it doesn't fucking work it's already rusting and falling apart but let's go ahead and finish it and of course just the the migration policies in general we saw him literally giving the republicans the heritage fund bill uh and signing off on it and saying okay that's fine i'll put my name on this a uh, 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 horrific bill allowing allowing us to treat people like absolute animals at the border. I mean, you know, I, I don't like the idea of just letting people, just kicking people back, you know, women and children, uh, just kicking them back out. But I also don't like this idea that there's like just some goofy loophole where they, as long as you cross the, as long as you cross the, the barrier, uh, you know, you fill out a quick little bit of paperwork and then you're kind of stuck in the American legal system for several years before anything can happen. I don't think that's a really smart way of doing it either. You know, I'd prefer some kind of system where, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, uh, they get proper documentation uh, and they get put into some kind of, you know, track so they, they can find opportunity and find work and they don't have to, you know, they like, let's get them in, let's get them turning, let's turn them into, into taxpayers as quickly as possible. Let's, you know, get them a house, get them a place to stay. Uh, along with everyone else in America, by the way. But you know what I mean? Let's turn them into productive members of society as quickly as possible and fulfill that promise about being the shining city on the hill. Uh, because truly, one of the things that makes America uh, so great and has made us so great over the years 
is our is the fact that we're a melting pot um let me just remind everybody we have so much room in the united states okay we we don't have to put everybody in california we don't have to put everybody in texas there's actually an incredible amount of space and last time i checked it doesn't take hundreds of billions of dollars to uh uh you know build some buildings and i just don't understand why it's it, you know i just don't get it it's easier it's easier to treat their kids like shit and put them in a fucking you know cement prison than it is to just i don't know build a fucking immigrant town right and that expands turn into immigrant metro metro metropop me, metropolis <laughs> i don't know anyway china tariffs look it up it's interesting stuff uh we're, we'll definitely be following up on this on saturday i i just i don't have much time i gotta keep moving um i found this uh, video to be absolutely fascinating um just to give you an idea of what's going on in the rest of the world um here comes and once again here's the right wing I, the right wingers that love to um you know that love to hate watch me it's fascinating do i need to remind the right winger before i you know time them out i have time i have time for this um this is literally the poem on the statue of liberty This is, you know, the Statue of Liberty, the thing that, you know, the icon of America, the thing that represents America most succinctly, most in its most purest fashion. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame. Welcome back, Smash. With conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sunset gates Listen. shall stand a mighty woman with a torch. Listen. Whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name, Mother of Exiles. Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that Twin Cities frame. Keep, ancient lands, your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Keep. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. You listening? The wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Right. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my light beside the golden door. That's the America. Emma Lazarus. I know. That's the America I know. Not this twisted, sick MAGA version that would have us throw away our principles, throw away our morality for some dictator, for some king. So keep your anti-immigrant, anti-American bullshit out of my chat, motherfucker. So I found this video to be fascinating. Um, over here in Myanmar, the civil war is is brewing, and uh, this is this is this is the unfortunate reality in a lot of these places. Child soldiers, and this is what it looks like, folks, from Radio Free Asia. Oh, <laughs> ที่ปะกูเวลามาโหชิ้นไปมาตรงกันเลยอ่ะสาวเวลาเลยชิ้นปีปะมาเอ็บปีมาที่ปะกูชื่อล่ะอะไรเออนะท้องนะเส้นน
There's no way she lives to see 30. There's no fucking way. Look at that, because that's just the reality. Uh, uh, yeah, don't give up. That's not because of her talent or her skill. One one mortar round and you're and you're smoked. It doesn't matter how Rambo you are, it doesn't matter how skilled you are. So there you go, just a little taste of uh the civil war over there in Myanmar. Um you you can bet we'll be following up and more coverage on what's happening over there, as well as the many other um incursions happening in that region. Uh moving on over here to um Indonesia. There are dozens killed in cold lava mudslides, flash floods in Western Indonesia. Um, you know, it's, it's a shame, you know, it's, it, mainstream media has really been dropping the ball uh, when it comes to reporting on this stuff. Cause you know, I, I have the mainstream media plugged into my, to my TV. And you know, when I turn on my TV and the, the, the goddamn garbage that they're covering, you know, of course it's just 27, 24 seven Trump. And, you know, they give, they give about five seconds to actual news happening in other places. Uh, Myanmar Battle Lines. Thank you for that update, uh, Davey. Um, if you want to follow that link for more information about Myanmar. Police, soldiers and volunteers have formed the search and rescue team, hoping to find survivors following flash floods in West Sumatra. Heavy downpours and torrents of cold lava from one of Indonesia's most active volcanoes, Mount Merapi, caused a river to breach its banks and engulf mountainside villages in the province. The flooding was very sudden. The river became blocked, which eventually resulted in an outburst of water everywhere. It was out of control. Almost a hundred homes wow. were severely hit, with temporary evacuation centers set up monkey. by the local government. The National Disaster Management Agency said equipment and personnel have been deployed to clear the roads blocked by fallen tree trunks. The disaster comes just two months after heavy rains triggered floods and landslides in West Sumatra, killing at least 21 people and leaving five others missing. You know, and once again, I go back to um, the uh, the fact that these, these local governments um, you know they're just wholly dependent on aid, and of course, I'm not saying that 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 means we should stop the aid, but uh, I'm really getting sick and tired of these corrupt government, you know, these family dynasties that are in charge in some of these places, and uh, they're you know they're getting fat off of you know U.S. trade deals, and you know every everybody everybody in the West is happy because you're 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 playing the game, but meanwhile you're doing jack shit for your people. Uh, I'm just getting really sick of it. But at the same time, it's not like they can do it alone. They do get a lot of popular support using dirty techniques, of course, but all the same. So this was a really, really interesting uh, uh, graph here from, from uh, you know, one of the wonderful chatters, Leon. Thank you, Leon, for this contribution. Really fascinating stuff uh, looking at the poll numbers for Brexit here. Brain just not working correctly. I want to make sure I'm spelling things correctly. But just so just to give you an idea of kind of how the missed opportunity that Keir Starmer has uh, uh, kind of had here by avoiding Brexit, because as you can see, the poll numbers with the question here, was Britain right or wrong to leave the EU? Um, you know, they kind of speak for themselves. So at the start here in 2020, we can see, uh, you know, 40 percent, 46 percent wrong, 40 percent right. And we see, you know, we see, you know, these things change as, as the, uh, as the election, you know, as the d decision goes, you know, happens and different, you know, different, uh, you know, strategies are put in place by the Tories. Uh, but as you can see, it's, it's basically wildly out of control. Oh, you know, that's actually interesting right there, right here. That, that, that feels like the Ramoner campaign right here. 20, 2020 to 2021. Was that the Ramoner campaign or? Uh, you know, oh god, that's fascinating right there. Look at that. But you know, as things as things were settling in, we can see as the reality, you know, it finally does break that around 2022, it finally breaks that 50 50% 50 barrier. And you know, as the as the economic changes, you know, don't come through, the promises, you know, uh are not kept. Uh, the local businesses are going away. The paperwork is piling up if you want to keep your business. 
Um, you know, all those lies that Nigel Farage told us, um, that Boris Johnson told us, uh, fucking Mog, that motherfucker told us, Mr. Monocle. So uh, don't don't let the gaslighters uh, lie to you. Brexit is wildly un unpopular, and for good reason. It's not it's not because of you know uh, the the Labour Party and their lies, and you know they're convincing everybody that a good thing is a bad thing. No, it's legitimately a bad thing. And um, quite frankly, if Keir Starmer gets into office, which is very likely that he is with the Labour Party there, uh, and doesn't do anything about reversing Brexit, vocally being out there and saying. Brexit was wrong. Okay, I'm in office. I'm not. I'm no longer afraid to say that. We are going to systemically dismantle what happened with Brexit and reinstitute. You know, we're going to rejoin the EU. We understand we'll, we'll probably get worse deals, but it's more important to get back in here. We're going to negotiate like hell, but it's more important to do this. We understand that there's people who live in the UK who would like to vacation. You know, at the very least, because imagine you used to be able to vacation in all these wonderful places, and now you got to like go through passports, and there's all kind of paperwork, and it's like, wait a minute, I used to be a citizen, kind of. I'm a world citizen of the EU. The very fascinating stuff. Uh, all right, moving on to Gaza here. It looks like we won't have time for uh, Ukraine, but uh, that means I'll just be covering it tomorrow during the, the lunch break there because I just got a small little lunch break here. Um, wanted to open up with uh, with this, uh, you know, uh, news right here talking about uh, Hamas in general because what, you know, unfortunately what we do see on the left um, is, look, what what this is what i see happening with hamas and the left um okay fox yeah no Bre brexit wasn't so bad yeah okay sure bud the mountain the mountain of evidence that speaks otherwise doesn't matter right your your feelings matter more um might want to upgrade my set of arguments yeah brexit yeah brexit was really good you're right no, Boris Johnson had the right idea. Hasn't been a total disaster for your economy. I, I certainly couldn't back that up with a mountain of evidence. There's, I couldn't simply type that in and pull up fucking hours and hours of YouTube videos of uh, academics going over, you know, policy by policy, move by move, how it's been a net negative for the for the UK for the British economy. But no, okay, yeah, you're right. No, I'm just being hyperbolic. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Anyway, moving on to Gaza. Um, this is what I see happening amongst the left. Um, of course, they don't support Hamas, but they support Palestine. Um, they understand that the Palestinians 20 years ago voted for Hamas. It's sticky. Um, and what they what they're what a lot of lefties are trying to do is kind of resist right wing narratives about you know lies that that are told or half truths that are told about how uh you know uh left wingers that are protesting uh support hamas automatically that supporting palestine automatically means you're supporting hamas so there's there's a there's kind of a knee-jerk effort to resist those narratives um and, and they it's it's kind of easy to get them flustered when they're just when a, when a person with a microphone walks up to some of these people and says, "Do you support Hamas?" Because they're because then they go, you know, they they don't want to answer that question um, because they themselves are confused about the connection between Hamas and and Palestine. The reason why they're confused is because there's not enough lefty talking heads like me who are who are helping them articulate. Um, the difference, the difference between Hamas uh, and a legitimate resistance is that a legitimate resistance wouldn't be using their population in such a cynical way. Um, I, you know, the, the whole human shield narrative has gotten really confused. Um, but in a way, Hamas is holding the Palestinians hostage. Um, they're, when, they, when they make moves, they're, they're not making moves uh, that benefit the Palestinians. In fact, 
you could say the moves that they've made recently, especially since October 7th, have benefited BB Netanyahu. Because what does BB Netanyahu need more than anything? What has actually saved his his uh, his electoral chances? Hamas in October 7th. If it wasn't for that, he might even be in jail, according to some people. So um, it's, it can be really difficult for regular lefties, regular student lefties who, you know, who love human rights and they, they know what's happening is wrong, but they, you know, they don't know all the inner working, the politics of it. You know, um, you know, it's like, you know, even I don't know all the little mini factions that disagree with Hamas. There's that, there's that one guy that's considered the, uh, um, I did it every time. I do it every goddamn time. Uh, uh, the uh, considered a great humanitarian, uh, you know, in in uh, the Gaza Strip, and he was immediately arrested by the IDF. Um, uh, apartheid. It just, you know, every damn time, I, you know, it slips my mind. I gotta read. I gotta read his books. Um, but there, you know, there. That's that's the problem. Is that the left? Uh, the, the people, the talking heads, the people, the people that the left are listening to, right? The YouTubers, the influencers, they're not doing a very good job of denouncing Hamas, quite frankly. They kind of get gummed up when they're asked, you know, I mean, isn't terrorism bad? And it's like, well, I don't want to I don't want to uh, be used in this narrative that is currently dehumanizing Palestinians about how every Palestinian is Hamas. I don't want to get wrapped up into that. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, you know, fall down that that rabbit hole. So I understand that. But at the same time, we need a proper response to this because and, and this is this is all the setup for this video here. So here we have evidence and I've seen this time and time again. This was provided by Davey and I don't deny, I don't deny its existence or, you know, or whatnot. But we see um, I mean, it, it, it maybe it shows Hamas, maybe it doesn't, but it does show you know, guys, you know, armed dudes hanging around, UNRWA, UN, you know, and it's like, you know, we've we've seen, we've I've, I've reported on and shown eyewitness reports. Uh, welcome back, Davey. But I've, I've shown eyewitness reports of doctors who worked in these hospitals. They're like, yeah, no, I saw Hamas coming and going, storing things here. And what are you going to do if you're a Palestinian? Right. You stand up to Hamas and you say you're not allowed to, you know, to operate here. You're not allowed to do your business here um, and you get smoked. You get killed, dude. That's what I'm talking about. They're not you know, they're not they're not a government representing its people, you know, some kind of resistance. Um, they're terrorists that are, you know, falling in line narratively for uh, the extremist right wing government of Bibi Netanyahu extremely counterproductive to the peace process and the left needs to teach everybody a language of how to separate these two how to speak eloquently about the difference between palestine and hamas because the, it's 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 very good it's it's a very good thing that we want to fight against this disingenuous narrative that every palestinian is hamas because look at this i mean you know the they put their people in danger. Could be private security. And you know, it's very private security guys might work for Hamas, right? Because you can you can make some money. Right? It, you know, get your hands on some good shit. So there's probably a lot of crossover there. Fatah so Hamas's rival political party is Fatah. Fatah dominates the Palestine. Yeah, well the the, the PLO are, are corrupt. The Palestinian Authority is corrupt. Uh, and rules in the West Bank, while well, Hamas is the largest military group in Palestinian territories, and the two major political the two parties have been. So there, you know, who's that? Who's the goddamn Nelson Mandela? Who's the Nelson Mandela of Palestine? What's his name? Um, <laughs> hold on, da, 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 da. too many Nelson Mandela articles. What's that homie's name? He was locked up immediately by the uh, Manwar. Was it Manwar? What's his nuts? Manwar. Yeah, Manwar Bargudi. Yeah. So, not a perfect character. Not a perfect character, by any means. 
Okay, welcome back, Clutch Cargo. Welcome back, Woke Patriot. Um, not a perfect character by any means, right? A guy that I probably would disagree with on a lot of things. But what we wouldn't disagree with on is how uh, Hamas is not interested in governing. And not only that, he was extremely popular with the people of the Gaza Strip. So instead of locking him up, we should do what the United States has done in a, a million other times. Artificially prop this guy up, install a technocratic government, create some stability in the Gaza Strip, rebuild, rebuild schools and homes and hospitals and uh, the, all the infrastructure that Israel has destroyed, rebuild all of it while artificially propping this guy up um, so that eventually you could unify the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. The reason why they're not, so what I'm trying to get at is that there's solutions on the table that don't involve blowing the fuck out of everything and, and, uh, and, and locking everything up and preventing Palestinians from getting their territory back and yada, 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 the ethnic cleansing. There's actually a solution that doesn't involve ethnic cleansing. Um, there are solutions there that exist. No, exactly, Woke Patriot. Israel has locked them up. Um, there are solutions that exist that don't involve 3,000 3, uh, ton bombs, bunker busters, and all the rest. You, there, you know, it's never talked about on mainstream media. Never. Uh, it's, it's always assumed that the only solution to, to, to this is uh, military. Just, as, just like with uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, war on America, war on terror. Um, it was assumed this is the only solution when, in fact, the only viable solution against terrorism is creating a healthy and stable middle class. Right? People, the moment there's a viable alternative to Hamas, people immediately want it. People would immediately want it. And yes, that includes the Palestine, the barbaric Palestinians who who better watch out if you give them an ounce of freedom that they'll they'll build up their weapon cache and start blowing us up. There's a fucking reason why that might happen. And if, if you want to change that, you, cre you create a different scenario where violence and revenge isn't the only solution. Why would, I, why would I commit violence and revenge when I could have a stable middle-class lifestyle? And I could feed my kids and my, you know, sure, I'm not going to have any friends in Israel. I'm not going to be calling up my Israeli buddies in, you know, my lifetime. But I'm not going to participate in a suicide uh, bomb, you know, terrorist attack uh, when I when I got when I got, when I can you know sell my products and and live a normal life in, in a normal in my in my country that is treated normally. The the best way to get rid of terrorism is to create a healthy and viable middle class, and that's the one thing that's never talked about by the West or Israel. Um. And quite frankly, when the when the when the left is confronted with the gotcha question of well, you don't like terrorism, right? Hamas is bad, right? I often see them fumble. I often see them dance around this question because they, like I said, they don't want to fall into that narrative of, um, you know, all Palestinians are Hamas. So I'm not going to sit here and defend Hamas, you know. But there, there should the left should have the ability to say terrorism is bad. The left should have the ability to, uh, you know, differentiate between a legitimate government resistance and a fucking disgusting, gross uh, uh, terrorist operation that has no fucking interest in in governing. The left should be able to, you know, figure that out. Uh, article here from Woke Patriot, I believe. Thank you, Woke Patriot. Got just a few more minutes. Uh, sorry, but, you know, this is all I got time for. I got to get back to the kid. Secret Hamas files show how it spied on everyday Palestinians. Hamas monitored political activity, online posts, and apparently even love lives. Palestinians were stuck between an Israeli blockade and repressive in a repressive security force. So while they should have been negotiating and working on, you know, their, their ties internationally and getting respected internationally... While they, you know, trying to, you know, build farms and hospitals and schools and, you know, try to try to give some kind of semblance of life to the Palestinians and defend their their plight uh, against the West. Um, they institute a fucking police state, a security police state. Yeah, dirty crackhead, indeed. Clutch cargo. Yep. Pretty much.
Exactly, dirty crackhead. It's called blowback. And, and, and like, we're going to sit here and pretend like the United States and Israel doesn't know exactly what the fuck that means. You know, what, you know, like, like we, like we don't have some kind of history of mankind to prove that when you put baby in a corner, baby starts swinging. That's just how human beings work. And, and we're just going to ignore the fact that that's exactly what was happening. There was a full blown blockade on the Gaza Strip for, for like since 2015 after Israel left or 2005. What was it? 2015 or 2005? But at the same time, the left needs to have when when that because what's the what's the right wing coming at you with the next comment? Oh well, what, what do you mean? You that does that mean that Hamas is justified in in, in October seventh? Are you saying Hamas is justified? And someone who's a fucking moron like like Hassan might say, well, okay, yeah, I mean, because Hamas is a resistance group, and blah blah blah. No, you need to have the ability to say, um. Uh, these atrocities can be avoided if we if we uh, allow Palestinians to be treated like human beings. Um, that these atrocities are horrible and should be condemned, but are inevitable when people are treated in the way that the Palestinians were treated. It takes a certain amount of gravitas and balls, I guess, to say that. But far too often, I see this lazy response: "Well, they're a resistance group, and they're representing uh, Palestinian freedom." the fuck they are this is this is their because they're uh, because they're theocratic authoritarian night because they're a theocratic authoritarian nightmare <laughs> what do they spend their resources on spying on their own people making sure that they could try to control dissent okay not every report about hamas shooting their own people is fake there's far too much evidence of this disgusting organization using the Palestinians for their own political gain. Not protecting them. If I don't have time to read this. I'm literally, I literally have time for one more video and it's this video here. If you would like to read this, this is a, a link from our buddy, Woke Patriot. Thank you so much, Woke Patriot. Yeah, well, Patriot doesn't make it right. And and quite frankly, I think you would agree that uh, Hamas and, and the Gaza Strip being in the critical situation that it is, it's a bit of wasted time and resources to be putting into, a, you know, spying on your own people. Wouldn't you agree? You know, pretty tight situation. Should be should be buttoning, but, buttoning down and making sure you're competent and making sure you're, you know, using all, you know, firing on all cylinders, trying to keep your people safe and keep your people liberated from the onslaught of Israel. Instead, you're wasting time make, trying to like control PR because you know you're not going to be governing. Last, last bit of video here. Every, you know, people have been talking about this. I need to talk about it, but, um, you know, the, uh, the, the so-called activists, They're not the only armed resistance, though. And the mo and, and and if people if people didn't have a barrel, if the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip didn't have a barrel to their head, barrel of a gun to their head, um, they would they would gladly choose a different government. But they're being held hostage by a terrorist organization that doesn't give a shit about how many of them die in uh, in a, in the next Israeli bombing. They're, they're not even there. The the four battalions uh, in Rafa, they're not even there. They've been in the tunnels the whole time. Thank you, Woke Patriot. I appreciate you uh, compromising in the argument. Because, like, you're... It's complicated. I do agree, but but quite frankly, I'm I'm sick and tired of seeing the left getting all uh, all choked up and and jammed up on the terrorism bad argument. Okay, Hassan should be able to articulate why uh, ha Hamas is a piece of shit. Not not do some lazy they're the res they're the re only resistance argument. Anyway, last last this is my this is the last video. These these disgusting so-called activists doing everything in their power to, to make sure the people of the, of the Gaza Strip are starving. Their argument is that 100% of this aid goes to Hamas. 
and that's not true but what is true is that portions of this does go to hamas hamas absolutely does take a certain portion of it steal as much as they can and yes they even sell it in the marketplaces they take the aid and sell it for and then you know use the money for their own disgusting aims that does happen it doesn't help anybody if the left denies that but my argument to that is um even if you cut this off completely hamas is still gonna end up getting you know they'll they'll just they'll be the last group that gets the food that they're gonna that hezbollah is gonna smuggle in and yada yada whatever they can smuggle in but honestly the only way blocking off food and water to the palestinians could work in hurting hamas is if they do it completely and and for for months on end for months on end the amount of suffering you would have to, i'm talking millions of people would probably die there's only two there's only a little over two million people in the gaza strip and i'm saying you would have to for this to actually hurt hamas because hamas would be the last group right that isn't supplied right just just like we've seen with any military right the last it's the, the military are the last people that get the last bit of resources when the society is collapsing so you would have to inflict serious damage on men women and children innocent men women and children who who want nothing to do with hamas who just want to live their life they want to fucking grow olives okay and they're not allowed to do that they're not an automatic threat to israel their existence so we got to kill all of those people for this to work and really what it is it's it's a sign that look there's a certain element of Israeli society that supports the eradication of the Palestinian people, the Palestinian state, they want to destroy it, eradicate it, erase it, gone, ge and genocide it, yes. Technically, this is an attempted genocide, currently active as an ethnic cleansing. But for these people, it's an attempted genocide. For Bibi Netanyahu, he'd be happy with an ethnic cleansing and just continuing to blockade and, and holding everybody prisoner indefinitely, I guess. Perpetually. He doesn't like a two-state solution, but apparently he also doesn't like the idea of complete Palestinian eradication. Maybe because the terrorist threat, the boogeyman, you know, is a really great political motivator. I don't know. So thank you for your comments. Here's some juice in the thread I linked. A juicy thread explains why Prigozhin wanted Shoigu gone. Thank you. I'm going to put that over in the Discord, and we'll definitely have that lined up for tomorrow during the next lunch break. So sorry, folks. I do I do got to get rolling. Big props to your boy, Dirty Crackhead. Thank you for coming back in. It's a long time no see. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Davin. Big props to you, Woke Patriot. Thanks you, thank you again, Woke Patriot, for all your wonderful links. Uh, same to you, Davey. If you want to join the Discord, contribute to the News Underground. Make sure you type that exclamation point Discord. Huck Finn, uh, thank you for your... Um, uh, comments there. It looks like you're a new new user. Thank you for coming in. Do appreciate your comments. Your boy Clutch Cargo, big props to you. Thanks for following Huck Finn. Appreciate it. Nice. 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 If You know, if you're a fan of news, if you're a fan of information, if you're a fan of getting shit done and being a political activist, this is the motherfucking home for that shit, dude. It's the news underground. Uh, Mr. Fox there, uh, I'm keeping an eye on you. Thank you for coming in. The Woke Patriot, or uh, yeah, Woke Patriot once again, but also the Ponder Monkey. Got your names mixed up. Thank you, Ponder Monkey. Uh, opinionator, go ahead and suck my dick. I didn't even have to ban you. You just ran away like a scared little bitch. Fuck you, the Opinionator. Suck my entire middle finger. Lenny, big props over there from south of Boston. Thank you so much, Lenny. Big props to you and, and your boy, Davey. Thank you, Davey, once again. Hey, folks, if you want to see some, some absolutely gruesome, absolutely horrific uh, videos of the Russian army getting its ass kicked by Ukraine. Make sure you check out the Discord. Davy has been posting the realest motherfucking links you'd ever seen in your life, including a link uh, that I will be showing on Saturday, but I'm going to have to completely censor the whole video of a Ukrainian badass, a legitimate Rambo taking on four Russians at once and winning. It's the absolute most amazing and most incredible uh U ukrainian uh video i think i've seen this entire war absolute hero right there and he does barely make it out in the end when his homies rescue him i can't wait to show it to you folks it's an absolute uh triumph of bravery 
uh, from the Ukrainians there. Smash, thank you so much for coming in. Smash, once again, big props to you, Smash. Strategy member, thank you, strategy member. You're the best. Thank you so much for all your links in the Discord. Strategy member. Uh, Rob MQ, big props to your boy, Rob MQ, for coming in, being a regular. I do appreciate that regular view. Thank you, Rob MQ. And all you lurkers out there, big props to the motherfucking lurkers, okay, who like to keep it real. Keep it real. I'm keeping my eye on you, Fox. All right, peace in that motherfucking Middle East and glory to the Ukrainian democracy. Let's not forget the three-step solution to create real political change. It's the only thing that's ever worked, as Clutch Cargo likes to say. Step one, inform yourself. That's why you're here. Step two, put your name down, all right? Sign up for that uh, protest organization. Sign up for that union. Sign up to help that politician that you think is actually going to create change and not just talk shit. They do exist. Step three, you got to put in the work like Charlie Kirk and stop being a bitch about it. Stop being a bitch about putting in the work for your society and putting in the work for your culture and putting in the work to make sure that your, uh, you know, government is actually held to account. It's not that hard. And God damn it, it's your responsibility. If we don't take responsibility for it, we're going to fucking lose it. And that's straight up. That's how it fucking works. So peace in that motherfucking Middle East once again. We'll talk to you real soon. It's, in, it's that news underground, bitch. It's that news underground, motherfuckers. That's right. One of us, one of us you trust is one of us. I don't know what you say, Pope Patriot. <laughs> Thank you for coming in, folks. It's News Underground.